Can I hear somebody say, praise the Lord this morning? Just want to make sure I'm in the right place. I'm not at the Legion, am I? Am I at church, right? Is this where we bless the Lord? Can I hear somebody say, praise the Lord? All right. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. I thank God that you are here this morning. Praise God for our online viewers as well. Uh, bless the Lord as well. Uh, we thank you for watching, and we pray and trust that God has a word for us all this morning. Hello to any visitors, first-time visitors that we have. It's a blessing to have you here this morning, and uh, God's got something to tell us. Are you ready to hear it? Amen. Let's bow our heads this morning as we go into the mighty word of God. God, we respect and we honor your word. And we trust that you have something to say to us today by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that ears would be open in this place. Those that have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Lord, we need a word for this hour, for this time, God. With so much shaking going on in the world, we need a place to stand. And we've chosen this morning to stand upon the rock who is your son, Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, I pray that there will be a great awakening that happens this morning, that the people of God would understand that they are of God that they have the Spirit of the Lord living on the inside of them, and there is nothing that can take them out of here. There is no authority on this earth or under this earth or above this earth that is stronger than the Spirit of Jesus Christ that lives inside of them. We are one with the Lord. We have been born again after the same spirit that he has. Lord, may this revelation and this truth resurrect your church. Father, I, I feel like I'm standing in front of the tomb of Lazarus, God, and I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that your church would awaken, God. They would awaken and they would come out of fear. They would come out of their graves, and as they do, God, God, may their grave clothes be loose. May everything that binds the church today be broken. May we understand that we are not mere mortals. We are not just humans. We have been born again after the Spirit of God. May this revelation be powerful and true, just as your word is. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So today's message is entitled, uh, this is part two of a series, Learning Our Identity in Christ. Can you say this with me? I have an identity in Christ. So you are not just who you are, who you were born, how many ever years you were born ago, given a social security number, given a name. That's not just who you are anymore. Once you were born again, you received a new identity in Jesus Christ. You share a spirit with him. Let's go. Uh, the, the, the name of the message again is learning our identity in Christ. More love, more power. Say this with me. Lord, I thank you for more love and more power. And the way that we receive more love and more power is because Christ lives in us. Where does Christ live? In us. Where does Christ live? In us. We are one with Christ if you have been born again. Let's begin in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. If you don't have the church app, you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, type in New Life Lima, and download uh, the New Life Christian Ministries app. There you will find uh, the sermon series I'm preaching right now, along with the notes. So you'll be able to follow along with these verses, and let this be your devotional throughout the week. 
go back and look at, say, what did God say to me on Sunday? I need to be chewing on this all week, and you can keep these verses in front of you. We're in Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. Again, the message is entitled, Learning Our Identity in Christ, More Love, More Power. And I'll tell you actually what I'm doing. Last week's message was all about the revelation of who we are in Christ. Who does God say that we are in Christ? This week's message is all about empowerment. Can you say empowerment? God has empowered us with his own spirit, and that's what you're going to learn about today. We have access to more love and more power. Matthew 1, 18 through 23, God with us. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, she was still a virgin. She became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Sister Linda, I believe God woke you up this morning. She's downstairs and talked about how we are pregnant with power right now, and God desires to release some things in this hour through our lives. But as my father used to preach many times from this very pulpit, he used to say, we have to get into the birthing position. I was just listening to a sermon he preached this week when I was driving around, and he said, when my wife had her children, she she didn't stand up and have them. She had to lay down and get in position to give birth. So church, God wants us to get into position to give birth to more love and more power through the spirit of God that lives on the inside of us. How do we get in position? You get in position by picking up your cross, denying yourself, and following Jesus. Following Jesus as he does what? Anything he wants to. Everything. He is all powerful. So when Jesus was here, he only did what he saw his father do, and he knew he could do it. But now that Jesus is gone and he sent his spirit back to us, he gives us the ability to know his will. Because, say this with me, I have the mind of Christ. That's how you know what the Father's will is. And, ooh, I feel like preaching to myself. If I could just put myself on that screen, I would just preach to me. All right. He lets us know what his will is because we have the mind of Christ. And if it's his will for it to be done, he has given us his Holy Spirit so that we have the power to do his will. Say this with me. I have the power to do the Lord's will. It wouldn't make sense for him to tell you to do something that you couldn't do. So everything that God says that you can do, you can do, but you can only do it by his spirit. So how do I get his spirit to the forefront and move Damien or move yourselves out of the way? You pick up the cross, you deny yourself, and you follow him. Let's continue verse 19. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. He decided. He decided. I'm waiting for you guys to catch it. He decided. This was not the will of God. He decided. I think too many of us Christians today are making decisions outside of God's will because we decided. We decided to do this thing and not, it was not the will of God. It did not come from the mind of God. It did not, it will not be powered by the spirit of God. He decided that he was going to put her away privately, all right? Verse 20, as he considered this, I thank God that he knows our mind. I thank God that before we can even mess up and take a step out of his will, that God will get a message to us. Please listen to when God tells you to do something. He says this, 
Uh, As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid. Let's pause right there. Joseph was deciding something himself because he was afraid. He was doing something against God, about to do something against God's will because he was afraid. We don't have the spirit of fear. We have power, love, and a sound mind, and occasionally we need to be reminded. Say this with me, Lord, remind me. We need to be reminded when we're acting out of fear acting out of discouragement, acting out of anxiety, because that is not the fruit of the Spirit. We need to be following only what God says do. So as he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Can you say this with me? I was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So just as Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, so were you. There's only one Spirit. There's only one Spirit, and God has given us the Spirit of His Son to be shared. Let's keep going. Verse 22. I'm sorry. I'm going too fast. Um, verse 20 again. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are named to name him Jesus. What's his name? For he will save his people. Whose people? His people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet, which was in Isaiah. Verse 23 says, look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. Church, can you say Emmanuel? They will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us. Not when it, when it says God is with us, the meaning is not that, that, that God hangs around us, that he's by us. I want to tell you a little bit more about the nearness of God. When he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, it doesn't mean that he's just going to follow you around and be near you. It means that his nearness is so close to you that you are intertwined. That you and God have become one on the inside. You share his uh, spirit with him. That's how near God is. Just as near as I was to my mother on March, uh, let's call it the 7th of 1977, I was inside of her and I was living. So what she ate, I ate. And where she went, I went. And what she heard, I heard. That's the nearness of my mother and myself. But I want to tell you that God and you are even closer than I was when I was in the womb of my mother. See, we were two separate beings. I'm not my mom and she's not me. But what God has done, that anyone that would believe in his son would become a new creation and you would share a spirit. For a little while, I shared a body with my mother, but I had to be ejected out. But now we are one with Christ Jesus. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. The Messiah's message is alive in us. We were born for a purpose, and the pandemic must not stop our purpose Our purpose is to declare that a Messiah has come to the earth and his name is Jesus Christ and all who believe on him will live and not perish. It's our purpose to be salt and light in this world. It doesn't matter that it happens to be during the pandemic. Do you understand? 
The pandemic does not stop your purpose. If you are still alive, you still have purpose. So instead of us being uh, so downtrodden and so discouraged about 2020 because of what COVID has done, why don't we put COVID on the run? Why don't we make COVID sorry that it came to the earth while we were here? Because we are here to declare that God lives, God heals, God saves, God is good, and that message cannot be stopped by the devil. This sickness is of the enemy because it steals, it kills, and it destroys. But the testimony of God's children right now should be that he came to give us life life and life more abundantly. I wish I belonged to a church that made more noise than COVID does. I wish that I belonged to a church that was not afraid to see Jesus' face in peace. Let me tell you something. All of us will have a cause of death. Every single one of us will have a cause of death. It can be cancer, a car accident, COVID. You can get killed just outside raking leaves. It doesn't matter. Death is only a doorway into eternity, and we've got to walk through it. But let me tell you something. Death is not the door that we're going to be walking through. The door that we're going to be walking through when these bodies stop living, that door's name is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way to the Father. So when these bodies die, our spirits don't. Our spirits walk into life everlasting to be with Jesus Christ. Amen? Don't believe it, you'll see. All right. Where'd all that excitement come from? I don't know. All right, where are we, man? Okay, the Messiah's message alive in us. All right. Colossians chapter 1, verses 26 through 29. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past. Remember? You're alive with a message. Say this with me. I'm alive with a message. Okay. This message was kept secret for centuries and generations past, but now, when? Now. When? Now. 2020, in the midst of a pandemic, it doesn't matter. Now. It has been revealed to God's people. For God wanted them to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret. Okay, listen. Here's the secret. Christ lives in you. In you. This was a secret for centuries. But now it's been revealed. Church, can you say now? Now the secret is out that not only can Jews be saved, but Gentiles as well. How are we going to do this? Because we weren't born Jews. How are we going to be saved? The Jews are God's chosen people. How in the world will he save an entire nation of sinners who weren't born through the bloodline of Abraham and Isaac? The way that he's going to do it is he's going to have the root of David named Jesus Christ become one with our spirit so that we can be grafted in to the Jewish nation. And this is that secret. Christ lives in you. This gives you assurance of sharing his glory. So... We tell others about Christ, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all the wisdom God has given us. We want to present them to God perfect in their relationship with Christ. Church, this is our purpose, okay? That's why I work. Here's what Paul is saying. That's why I work and struggle so hard 
depending on Christ's mighty power that works within me. The reason many of us aren't mighty is because we're trying to do things in our own power. We are not the power source. The secret is that Christ lives in us. So how do we let him out? We let him out by picking up our crosses, denying ourselves, and following him, doing what he would have done. It's just like Jesus Christ has been given another life on earth, and you are that life. Jesus lives inside of you in 2020. Jesus is still on the earth. I want to say it again. December the 13th, 2020, Jesus lives on earth. Where? In us. That is the secret that Christ now lives in us. The devil made the biggest mistake ever by crucifying Jesus. He thought by getting rid of Jesus, they'd be done with this son of God business. But what he didn't recognize is that the reason Jesus died on the cross was not, oh, hallelujah, was not just to save the church, but to release the church into the entire world because he could only be one place at a time except a kernel of wheat fall to the ground and die it abideth alone but if it dies it produces much fruit good morning fruit that's you you are the fruit of Christ you have been given his spirit he tricked the devil he tricked them that's why he rebuked Peter and said, Peter, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You're speaking from just a human perspective. You want what you want, but I know what I came to do. It was the ultimate plan. Hiding inside. You've heard the story of the Trojan horse, how they pushed the Trojan horse into the city and there were soldiers hiding inside the horse. And at night, the soldiers came out and they unlocked the gate and all the soldiers were to come in. This was the perfect Trojan horse, Jesus on the cross. They thought they were killing one man, but they were giving birth to millions. We were on the inside of him. And when he died, he released his spirit to all those who would believe on him. Let's go to Acts chapter 17, verse 28. He is the where, the why, and the how we live. Is it okay if I talk about Jesus in here? You guys don't, don't mind? Okay, all right. Acts 17, 28. Say this with me. He is the where, the why, and the how we live. Acts 17, 20 says, 17, 28 says this, for in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Say this with me, church. Close your eyes, and I want you to say this. I want you to say this. In him I live, I move. And I have my being. Holy Spirit, I'm praying right now in Jesus' name that a revelation will be dropped into our spirit as we say this again. Eyes closed and hands raised. Eyes closed and hands raised. 2,000 years ago, God had a plan. He had a plan that he would release his spirit into those that were called Gentiles and they would be saved again. Say this with me, church. In him, I live, I move, and I have my being. I receive this as truth. I am no longer the same in Jesus' name. Let's praise God for this truth. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
that ship got to be on. It is in him. If it's in you, you live and move and have your being, you're in trouble because your days are numbered. But if it's in him you live and move, you have your being, then we have eternal life with the one who saved us. So see, our new being, this new being that I'm talking about, is a shared spirit. Through that shared spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, we are able to do all things. Why? Because our lives are now one with Christ. The less you believe this, the more of a carnal reality you'll have. The more worldly and fleshly you'll be. The more sad and depressed and anxious you'll be, the more, oh man, the more time you spend in you, the more time you spend in defeat. The more time you spend in Christ, the more time you spend in power and victory. If you live and move and have your being in you, you will be affected by everything you see. If you live and move and have your being in him, you will have an effect on everything that you see. Because it is God that powers you and not the world that moves you. Amen? Amen. So, they persecuted Jesus for calling himself the Son of God because that implied that he was God. Let's go to John chapter 22, verses uh, 22 through 38. I want you to know that you are now the offspring of God. And if you are of God, then God and you are one. Say this with me. I am one with God. I hope you understand this because you're, we're not just human anymore. We're, we're a new creation in Christ. So we are one with God. And the Jews, oh man, they got mad. When Jesus would talk like this, when he would say that he was a son of God, they, they would pick up stones and get ready to kill him for making the claim that I'm saying to you right now that you are the sons and daughters of God. John 10, 22. It was now winter and Jesus was in Jerusalem at the time of Hanukkah, the festival of dedication. He was in the temple walking through the section known as Solomon's Colonnade. The people surround him and ask, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me. Church, I hope that when I tell you that you are one spirit with God right now, if you've been born again, that you believe me. Because it will change your behavior, it will change your worldview, it will change what you accept from the enemy. You will be able to uh, trample upon his head. You will be able to do so much more than you're doing right now if you will only believe that God lives in you and you and his spirit have become one. Let's continue. Jesus replied, I have already told you and you don't believe me. The proof is the work that I do in my Father's name. Church, can you say, we've got work to do? You see, listen to this. Your eternal purpose is proof that God is with you. You were sent here on assignment to do miraculous things in the name of Jesus Christ so that people would believe on God. Say this with me. There is proof in my purpose. Those of you that were hungry were thinking there's proof in the pudding, but I don't have any pudding for you, all right? There is proof in your purpose because God, from the beginning of time, assigned you to do some great works in his name, and this will be the proof that God is with you, all right? But you don't believe me because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. What kind of people are these going to be? Jesus is talking to them, and, and they're thinking, he just said that there's going to be people that never perish, but Aunt Susie's dead and Uncle Al's dead. What's he talking about? A, a group of people that will never perish, all right? 
no one can snatch them away from me. For my Father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. Once again, the people picked up stones to kill him. Jesus said, at my Father's direction. Church, can you say, at my Father's direction. It's how the sons and daughters of God live. We don't live after our own will. We live after the Father's direction. For the Word of God says, those who obey the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So here is Jesus saying that at my Father's direction, I have done many good works. For which one are you going to stone me? They replied, we're not stoning you. We're, not, we're stoning you not for any good work, but for blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be God. Jesus replied, it is written in your own scriptures that God said to certain leaders of the people, I say you are gods, and you know that the scripture cannot be altered. So if those people who receive God's message were called gods, who else has received God, God's message? Us, okay? We have also received God's message. If they were called gods, why do you call it blasphemy when I say, I am the Son of God. After all, the Father set me apart and sent me into this world. So listen, church, I am a Tibbs. Belinda was a Tibbs. And the way that we were named Tibbs is because our father was a Tibbs. So that we had a right to say that we are Tibbs because my father was a Tibbs. I am trying to tell you this morning that you are not just mere mortals anymore, but you have the Spirit of God living on the inside of you, and you are one with Him. Why? Because your Father is God, and His Son, Jesus Christ, is your brother. He was the firstborn of the dead, and now there are many offspring, and we are that offspring. I am not just a man, and I'll prove it to you one day. When you see me on the streets of gold, you'll say, hey, you were right. You are not just a man. I am not just Listen, I wasn't sent, I was only sent here to live in this body just for a little while. Let me tell you about my other home. His name is Jesus. It's in him that I live and I move and I have my being. It's in him. That's why I do not fear death because Jesus already got victory over the grave. Already got victory over death. And he is where I live. Listen, don't be scared of death. Death is just how we get there. If Jesus had to die, you've got to die. But haven't you read the story about what happened three days after Jesus died? He rose from the grave. And if he did it, being the firstborn of many brethren, guess what you're going to do at Woodlawn and at Memorial Park and whatever cemetery that you'll be buried in? There will be one day when you also rise from the grave. When I say you, I'm talking about the body. Because the spirit goes to be with Jesus. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We will reconnect with a body, have a new glorified body at a later date. Can you say when, pastor? Nope, not going to trick me. No man knows. Man, I'm preaching hard. All right. Let's go to, let's finish this verse, verse 38. But if I do his work, believe in the evidence of the miraculous works I have done, even if you don't believe me, then you will know and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Okay, so listen, I'm going to skip ahead some, so please get the notes. 
If you don't have the app but still want access to the notes, just put something on Facebook with your email address, and we will email you the notes, okay? Or send it privately on Messenger if you, want, if you don't want your email address all out there. So the title of the message was More Love, More Power. So I'm going to skip to that, and then I'm going to let you go. So let's go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish. There's that race of people that don't perish, but have everlasting life. So, John 3.16 declares that there will be new eternal beings in Christ. You see, Adam had God's breath, but we have God's spirit. Say it again. Adam had God's breath, but we have God's spirit. When Adam, when God breathed into Adam, the Bible says that Adam became a living individual soul. But now that we have been born again, we are not just individual souls. We have become a new creation in Jesus Christ, and we share a spirit with him. So now that I might be on earth, I still have the spirit of Christ in me. And although he is seated up high in heaven, I am still in him because the Bible says that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ. This is all good news. And it was all done in the name of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Remember, it's all in the name of love. Let's go to John 14. John 14, 23 through 27 says this. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them. And we will come make our home with each of them. Did you know that was in the Bible? All who love me will do what I say. My father will love them. And we will come and make our home with each of them. Remember, in him we live, we move, and we have our being. How? All in the name of love. He loved us so much that he had to give us new houses. Houses that would not perish. Houses that were not made with men's hands. You see, we've got a lot of respect for this church we're sitting in. But God has made a church not out of bricks, but out of people. Out of the new creation who we are in Jesus Christ. Let's continue. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. I'm telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, thank God for the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind, and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. So it's all in the name of love that God has done that. So now we have more love. Say this with me. I have more love. The reason you have more love is because when you love God and obey his commandments, love comes to live in you. God is love. So when you love God, you prepare your body, your spirit to become a sanctuary of love to where God will move in and his son will move in. And now you have more love. Who wants more power? All right, let's get some more power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses doing what? Telling people about me. Remember I told you that we are messengers? So our purpose is to display this message to the world. 
And he says that we will tell people about him everywhere in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the ends of the earth. Finally, I want to tell you this. Since we've got power over the devil, we should be snake shakers. Say this with me. I am a snake shaker. Don't get worried. I'm not going to pull out buckets of snakes right now. And you're like, I didn't know that was this kind of church. No. (laughs) I got a brother that's disappointed. Let's go to Acts chapter 28, verses 1 through 6. And in this hour, since we have power, God is calling the church to be snake shakers, not charmers. You don't want to be a snake charmer. You don't want to be one who entertains the devil. You don't want to be one in whom the devil is comfortable being around. You want to be a snake shaker, all right? Acts 28, verses 1 through 6. This is Paul. Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks, so what I first noticed about this passage is that Paul was helping. He was a guest on the island, and they were building a fire for him, but yet he was being a servant, all right? This is very important for you to know that, oh, man, this is good. Let me just keep going. Oh, as Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. So Paul was doing a good thing. He was serving. God lived in Paul, so Paul was full of love. So he's saying, these people are being kind to me. Let me be kind to them. But in the act of doing good, still a snake jumped out and bit Paul on the hand, and it was a poisonous snake. Verse 4. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. He shook the snake back into the fire. He was doing God's will, but yet was bit by a snake. But they said, since he was bit by the snake, he must be a murderer, and this must be God's justice against him. There are many Christians who have been bit by the snake of COVID, but yet we've been able to shake that snake off of our hand and put it back into the fire. Now, I'm not saying that uh, if you die from COVID that that means that you weren't a Christian. That's foolishness. Listen to what I'm trying to tell you. We all will have a cause of death. There will be a cause of death. But there's something greater than the cause of death, and his name is Jesus. So no matter how we get to Jesus, that doesn't matter. But what I'm telling you is this. If it's not your time to go, and if you get bit by something poisonous, if Satan latches his dirty fangs on your life and it's not your time to go, you will shake that snake back into the fire. We are called to be snake shakers. They watched Paul and said, you know what? Let's watch him die. The news was out. Pastor Tibbs had got COVID. Let's watch him die. The news was out. Some of you got COVID. Let's watch them die. But that's not what happened at all. You shook that snake off of you back into the fire where it belongs. Luke 10, 18 through 20 say, yes, he told them. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, church, can you say look? We got to stop looking at the world, looking at disease, looking at bad news. Jesus said, look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes, not around snakes. You can walk among snakes and scorpions 
and crush them. I can't crush a snake that I'm hiding from. I can't crush a snake if I walk around it. If God says, I want you to walk straight from point A to point B, and I say, but God, there's snakes there. And he says to me, Damien, look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But... Don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered. Where? In heaven. Let's stand. God in us, the hope of glory. God in us. So when that snake bit Paul, it did not bite just Paul, it bit God. I'll let it marinate for a minute, and then I'm going to say it again. When that snake bit Paul, it was not just biting a man, it was biting a man of God. When the devil messes with you, he's not just messing with a man or a woman. He's messing with a man or a woman of God. That's the whole point of the message. We are of God. We are his children. We are of God. Philippians 4.13 says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. The Amplified Version said it this way, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you would awaken your church to the power that lives on the inside of us. God, you saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning and land under our feet. We are not mere mortals anymore. We are no longer connected to Adam. We are now a new creation in Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God lives in us and it's through Him we live and we move and we have our being but you must believe it faith must power this truth if you are to be a partaker of his spirit for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever should what believe where there's no belief there's no power where there's no belief, there's no victory. Only believe. You can walk on water if you believe. You can shake snakes into the fire if you believe. But if your faith is small, you will faint in the day of adversity. So I pray that you would recognize that you have a partnership with God through the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. Raise your hands all over the building. I want you to recognize, recognize, be made aware that you have a partnership with God and the evidence of it is the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. Church, say Abba. 
Abba means Father. God is your Father now, and the evidence of it is that He's given you His Holy Spirit so that those that have His Spirit might, they might now call God Abba. Adam could not call God Abba because Adam was just his creation. But once you've been born again after the Spirit of God, you become a son and a daughter of God. And he gives you his Spirit that you might cry out, Abba. You can call Jesus, you can call God what Jesus called God. Jesus called God Abba, Daddy, Hallelujah, Father. And once you've been born again, you can call God Daddy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let this truth be settled in this place, that you are Abba, and we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Thank you, Jesus. We will not perish. Men and mortals, they die. But this new creation that has been made in God's uh, image now, oh man, that's good. Adam was made in God's image and likeness, and he breathed into his nostrils and gave him breath and became a living soul. But listen, Jesus is the second Adam. And now we have been made in his image and his likeness. We have been remade in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ himself. So much to the point that your Bible says that as Jesus was on this earth, so are we. I want to read this last verse over you and declare this blessing over you. Ephesians 3.16 says this. May he grant you out of the rich treasury of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit himself indwelling your innermost being and personality. Father, I thank you that we have been empowered to live like Christ on this earth by your own very spirit. We thank you for these things this morning, God, in Jesus.